Nerd Rage Relegates. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Renegade Reviews. These are your reviews for the new comic book day of June 27th, 2018. Hope everybody is having a great week so far, full of reading comics and having some good times. Thank you to everyone who's been tuning in to the show, tuning in to the, to the NR Podcast Live, and everybody who's been showing so much support for me and for Chief. Thank you all so much for everything you do. You all are freaking amazing. Yeah, it's been a good week. A good couple of weeks, I'd it's, say. It's been a great couple of weeks. We've got some good books to talk about this week, and the announcement that soon, not only will we be bringing you IDW, Boom, and DC Comics, but coming very soon, we're also going to be bringing you Zenoscope. Yeah, they got some. They got some uh, cool looking books over there. I've never really read any of their titles, but I'll check them out. I love Zenoscope's really cool because they take like the fairy tale characters. Yeah. And and create these stories out of them, and a lot of good J. Scott Campbell art. Yeah, they they, they always look cool. I've just never read any of them. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to get a, get a look at them. So let's start off with IDW this week, because of course me, it's IDW, it's Sonic the Hedgehog week, and That's I get right. Sonic the Hedgehog number six coming in with three, three variant covers. Uh, one by Jonathan Gray, another by the great Tracy Yardley, and then Natalie Fon- uh, Fordrain, uh, Ian Flynn doing the writing, Tracy Yardley on the art, and Jim Amash on the inks. You know I'm a huge fan of Tracy Yardley art when it comes to Sonic. I think he's one of the premier Sonic uh, artists out there. Uh, yeah. The story is still... It's kind of like they're still building uh, You know this new... This new Sonic kind of book out there and it's, I'm still they still I'm still not sure what I, I guess this is still the timeline that was affected after the Genesis story arc over in Archie and then of course the Worlds Collide arc with Mega Man um, at Archie I think this is still that post kind of world uh, because we still haven't seen any of like the uh, Archie comic like Freedom Fighters like Sally Roder or anything like that it's been mainly sticking with the characters you would see in like the games yeah. uh which I hope that's not the case that we that they're only going to stick with the game characters. I hope those uh, the characters that we've known and loved for the past twenty thirty years come back. Um, because while I'm I'm digging it, I mean while I'm digging it, and I truly am digging it, and I don't want anybody to think I'm not because I'm a huge Sonic fan. Uh, I still miss those days of you know the kind of darker Sonic stories. Yeah, but well, I mean, you know, anything can happen in the future. I maybe hope so. Maybe they'll make some kind of deal. Get those characters back. God, I wish. Um, so this one, continuation of the of issue number five, where uh, Shadow the Hedgehog and Rouge the Bat show up uh, because there is a Dr. Eggman lost his memory, calling himself the Tinker. So it's pretty much a, an issue of Sonic and Shadow kind of running around, trying to... A, a lot of like pages of just them running after each other. Uh, trying to Sonic trying to say, look, he's re- he's lost his memory. Look, he's helped us in the past. Um, and there's a big twist at the end that I'm not going to give away. But the art is very crisp and clean, which I expect nothing less from from Tracy Yardley. Um, the, the 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 pages are, I mean, just the things that he puts onto the pages, the the multiple kind of cockeyed um. Uh, boxes, uh, the way he draws the characters. He really does understand the characters and knows how to draw them. And that's one of the things I truly love about Tracy Yardley's art is he knows these characters inside and out. Yeah. And I think for any artist coming, you know, any artist on a book, especially a long running series or something that's getting kind of like a new fresh start, to have an artist that is so familiar with the source material and the characters just adds a little bit more when you're trying to relaunch. You know, it'd be like we're gonna relaunch Spider-Man, but and we're gonna bring you know John Romita Senior's coming back. You know, yeah, yeah. 
Something like that. So I really do enjoy that. The story, I'm still trying to get a little bit into it. I mean, did, I'm into did, it. Uh, did he write some of that story too, or did he just do art? He just did art on this one. Ian Flynn is writing it, which I like Ian Flynn's stuff. You know, Ian Flynn, longtime writer for Sonic. I really do enjoy his stuff. I'm just kind of, like I said, I just wish we could get back to like those, the, 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 Back in like the 100s and things like that of the of the Archie series, number wise, just those darker stories, those so- stories where all hope seems lost, where it's not all you know, cutesy wootsy type of thing. And, and I'm not saying this 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 new book is cutesy wootsy. I think it's just, I don't know if it's also because of when those comics were made, the the paper was still you know it's still kind of like newsprint, so the colors were a little more darker. They weren't as vibrant as we have nowadays. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean, but what do you think? Do you think you would like? The, do you think you would forget all about the old continuity if they came up with some brand new characters that weren't from the games that, and introduced new stuff, and you could just get into that kind of like they did with like Rom, like just totally get rid of the old Marvel history and reboot it as something completely different. See, with I don't know, I, I maybe, but the, see, the thing with Sonic is being so ingrained with the Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, back in the 90s, which the bulk... I mean, that's basically what the comic... I mean, yeah, the comics started off as, like, you know, any of those kind of kids' comics in the 90s where it was a book and you would have, like, two or three stories in the comic. Yeah. You know, but then it really did become more of a long-running epic anthology. Well, not so much an anthology, but a a long-running story. And the characters were from the Saturday morning cartoon and there was love and loss and things like that. So it, that one is really hard for me to kind of say because I well like I said while I love the IDW comic so far and I love my Archie comic maybe something would be good if they brought in brand new characters I'd never seen before you know quit using some of these you know because it, it, it's, well, it seems like they're doing everything they can to to uh, to imply that that continuity still exists yeah even though they're not allowed to use any of it they they imply that it is. I think for me, it's kind of like right now, it's kind of like, it's kind of seeming like guest star of the week, you know, because yeah. they started off with Tails in the first issue, and then you get Amy Rose in the second. Then they did introduce a new character, like in the third and fourth issues, um, but but then still had Blaze the Cat, which is from the video games. Uh, then they brought in the Chaotix, and now they got Shadow and, and Rouge the Bat, which are from the games. And it just seems like right now it's kind of like, who from you know every issue we're gonna have one of the characters from the games pop up and be kind of like this special guest character and i was looking at a couple of those as they've come out and they the artwork looks better to me than, than the old days i mean yeah like i said tracy arley's got some does amazing work and yeah some of the older stuff you know sonic had like really long legs and things like that but there was just something about some of that old stuff that was I, I I don't know. It's just, it's hard to explain, but I'm still digging this, and I think any Sonic fan is still going to dig this book. I'm just I'm just I just want um like the twist the the twist at the end of this. I'm interested to see what happens next because there is a huge twist. I'm not going to ruin it, but um, I uh, I'm interested. I'm I mean I'm invested. I am invested in this. So uh, you know, um. I love you know they still have the Sonic letters in the in the in the back like all the old comics did. There's even a cosplay photo of a Diana Pellegrino with a really good Sonic cosplay. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm I'm invested in this. So uh, and there's also a uh, thing for uh, Ghostbusters answer the call. Oh hey, and of course Gem and the holograms. Which isn't a bad book, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll be truly honest. That's not a bad. If you if you're a gem fan, that's not a bad book. No. Nah. So what did you get from uh, IDW this week, buddy? Uh, this week I read the. Uh, well, first of all, I down I, I downloaded this because uh, I wasn't I I just saw it said beauty horror because we got this page it's got just titles on it so. Right. I didn't, I didn't know it's beauty horror volume three and I uh, and it's uh, it's a coloring book. <laughs> oh really. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I, I, I was looking through some of the artwork, and it's pretty good. Uh, so I had to find one that had, like, had a story to it. So I uh, I immediately went to – first I went to this one called Silence of Malka, which is a one of the trades coming out. It's a, it's a trade paperback coming out, I guess. Uh, but it is a 
it was kind of weird, man. I didn't know what to expect of it. Like I, I was talking to you a little bit before we started recording this, but uh, it starts out with this long introduction about how, like in the 1880s, there was this uh, this prejudice against Jews in Russia, I guess, and they were gonna. A lot of Jews were migrating out of Russia and trying to either go to America or try to go to Argentina. Hmm. So uh, this story follows this family that uh, that uh, immigrates to Argentina, and it turns out that nothing they were told, like they were fed this line, like, oh, you know, you get everything you need over there. It's perfect and beautiful and everything. And they, they find out that they, they're lied to about a lot of stuff, and it's it's a lot harder than they were expected it to be. And like, they, they're expected to farm this land. And none of the people that went there were like farmers. They were like tradesmen and, and uh, like woodworkers or whatever, you know, they were like craftsmen of different things and they didn't really farm. So when they got there, uh, they were having a hard time of it. So I originally thought when I started reading it, that it was just going to be this uh, story of growing up in Argentina and, and, like the hardships of doing that and immigrating to a new country and all that stuff. Uh, I didn't expect it. It gets really cool. Actually. I didn't expect, I thought it was going to be like just kind of dry historical story, hmm. but it gets pretty cool. Cause this farmer who can't really make it, he tries to go get a loan uh, for, for his family and, and they, they turn him down. They say, well, we're already this organization, this like Jewish uh, colonization organization doesn't have enough money to give you. So, um, he uh, he's walking home and it's like storming and stuff. And he gets like a messenger from God comes to him and tells him to build a golem and write this, write the word emit on it, it, which means like truth or life or something. And it'll come to life and do like his farm work for him. He'll have an extra free farmhand to do work for him. And it'll become this living person. So he goes home and he does it. And, uh, like, in between, it's, like, leading up, like, it's a story about this girl, Malka, who lives on this farm, and uh, it's her uncle that's doing this. And, uh, like, like normal stuff's, like, going on, like, the whole time, like, regular everyday life. But this guy is, like, creating this thing. And he, he creates it, and it, it works out, and it's, it's working for him. And uh, it's, like, helped him survive and everything. And uh, so uh, elsewhere... There's a, a native uh, Argentinian girl that likes the golem. She like wants the golem to notice her, and uh, and so she goes to this like uh, like tribal witch lady that gives her like a love potion, and she's supposed to feed it to the the golem's dog, and then when the dog licks his hand, that it will it will love her for forever. So uh, what happens is she feeds it to the dog. The dog loses its, like, does something weird to the dog because it's not a human they're trying to do this to. It's a, a man-made man, like, basically a Frankenstein's monster that uh, that it goes and it bites him, and it bites him right where this word that brought him to life is, and it skews the word to where it says now death. And so this thing becomes a servant of death and just starts killing everybody. This goes on a rampage and kills like a ton of people, hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's weird. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if that's like, gonna be a continuing story or what. It's, it's, but uh, it flashes forward like it runs away. It kills all these people and it runs away, and then it flashes forward to this girl Malka, like when she's older, and like through all of her life, like her family's been searching for this thing to destroy it. And uh, it, it reminds me a lot of Frankenstein, like the, the story of Frankenstein, the way the guy creates this thing and it destroys his whole life and runs away and then he's hunting it forever. Uh, it's kind of like that. Uh, but uh, they find it and she goes and the, the, the servant or one of the messenger of God comes to her and, they, and it, he appears a couple of different times in, in, uh, in different places. And he tells her the, the reason why it flipped out and killed all those people and like why it's not truly responsible. Like it's the thing on its leg or whatever it's commanded it to do this. So, uh, but she goes and she finds it and it gets scared and it runs away from her. And, and then it just kind of ends. Like she's just kind of like, that's, I guess that's where she's just going to let him go. 
and uh, live out whatever existence he lives. But he, like it said through the years, he'd become like a hitman for the mafia. He'd done all these because he's a servant of death now. He does like murderous jobs to get by. And uh, so I, I'm not sure if that's a continuing series for IDW or not, but it's pretty cool. I like the concept of it. I, I got into it. Like after I started, I, I, like I said, at first I thought it was going to be like this like dry historical tales of immigration from Russia kind of story. <laughs> But it, it turned out that it turned into this like Frankenstein story. It turned into be like a really cool thing. So yeah, I would I would recommend that one. That's a really good a really good one. Did you uh, did you read any more from IDW? I did it? not. Uh, the other one I read was uh, Gears of War. Um, this is also a trade, I believe, because uh, it's really long. <laughs> but it's uh, Gears of War: The Rise of Rom, which this is a, a whole story about. The rise of this uh, this guy Rom in the ranks of the locust people who live underground. Uh, I, like I said, I played I played a little bit I played a little bit of Gears of War. I think like the the first one because uh, it because it came free with a console that I got, <laughs> so I, I had that one. Uh, but uh, it's the the locust army and like all their weird mutation creatures and stuff that they attack the surface with. And it's kind of just like a lot of uh, this guy's political rise through the ranks of the military of this, like whatever they are, like alien or underground troglodyte people army. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he, 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 it's a lot of uh, backstabbing and political injury going all the way through it until it finally comes down to where they're going to attack the surface. And uh, like at the end, they finally attack like the humans. And it, But it's this, it's, uh, this guy's rise to... Uh, rise through the ranks of this thing. It's, it's actually pretty interesting to, to read. And the artwork is pretty fantastic. Um, definitely people will dig it that play Gears of War, that love Gears of War. Uh, but, man, it's 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 def- it's for mature readers. There's a lot of uh, F-words in it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a lot of – it's totally – it's really violent and hardcore. But, yeah, I dug it, man. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm not – huge on the lore of years of war like i know there's a few different games and uh and some people are real into it but uh like i've only played like one one of the games and i still enjoyed the book it's still pretty uh even if you if you're not like an expert on gears of war you can still read it and it's still a pretty cool like sci-fi action comic right. and uh the artwork is pretty badass uh let me just give you some credits here so you know who it's by let me get to the first page again come on update. there we go and where is the credits page my uh, computer's wanting to go really slow let's see it's written by uh, uh, Curtis J. Weeb mm-hmm. uh, art by Max Dunbar colors by Jose Luis Rio letters by Gilberto Lesgano and uh man the the artwork is like super detailed like awesome like sci-fi like these the alien like the creatures look really cool cool and the cover's pretty badass but yeah i'd uh, i'd recommend that one i mean it's it's real hard for me to like be super critical of books that they give me for free to <laughs> i know to review but i mean like if i seriously if i didn't like it i would i, would, I just wouldn't review it or i would be like yeah you know right i mean yeah but definitely i would i like this is like i get a list of books and i pick this one and then I was not disappointed. It's pretty awesome. I like the uh, all the artwork and uh, the story was pretty cool. It like had a, actually had a story. It wasn't just like a chucking video game obscurity at me. It like, had an actual story to follow. So uh, yeah, I dug it, man. Uh, that one and uh, I would definitely uh, if you get a, if you can get a chance to read Silence of Malka, get read it because it's. it's It'll throw you for a loop. It's not what I was expecting at all. All right, moving on to Boom. Uh, I took a look at the uh, Power Rangers 25th anniversary book. And I wanted to read that one because I read one of the Power Rangers last and started getting into it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I haven't five, had a chance yet. Five stories. Uh, writers are Jessica Quernos, Matt Groom, and Michael Busatil. Magdalene Visaggio, Cinna Grace, and Trey Moore. Art by Joe Quernos, Lucas Wernick, French Carlo Magno, Ella, uh, 
Well, instead of Grace, uh, did the the art on hers, and uh, uh, Dae Jung Lee uh, did Alex, art on it. Uh, is it Alex Ross that did the cover there? Uh, the cover was actually by Steve Morris. Oh. So you get five different stories. These are all standalone stories uh, throughout the Power Rangers universe. So you get one with the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers around the time of the White Ranger. Um, you get another, uh, which has to deal with the uh, when the three original characters, uh, Trini, Jason, and Zach, left the show. And they brought in Rocky, Aisha, and um, Adam. Are these three separate, like out of continuity? Just one. Yeah, shot these are all five, stories? just this out of continuity shots. Um, you. So you get those two. You get one that uh, deals with the Mystic Force Power Rangers. Another that is a crossover between the Mighty Morphin and I think it's RPM. Uh, that one I'm not sure. That one's actually really cool because it's those two teams take on a kind of like Cthulhu type monster. Yeah, uh, this extra dimensional like, g you know, freaking giant Cthulhu monster. I'm coming to find out that the comic book Power Rangers are easier for me to swallow than the yeah. TV show. <laughs> it's just a lot because I mean the TV those big rubber monster suits look ridiculous and what it's just it's like for kids like for little kids the the Power Rangers like when you watch it on TV but the, the comics they they help suspend that disbelief a lot. <laughs> right, um, but. Not getting too much into all of them. You also get a story that has to deal with the Galaxy Rangers and the Trial of Astronema. Um, if you're a Power Rangers fan, been a Power Rangers fan your entire life, I mean, know the, the ins and outs. You're going to love these stories. I I know a lot about the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and a few others that my son watches. There's some that I'm not uh, as familiar with. But as far as standalone stories, they're fun little standalone stories that kind of show the myriad over the, the years of the Power Rangers. Uh, the, the, the one that I really enjoyed was the one with the Mystic Ranger, the, the Mystic Force, because that one was done by Magdalene Visaggio. Um, but it's, it's got magic, it's got knights, like they're like the Power Rangers or like knights, like ancient knight Power Rangers. Hmm. Uh, really cool looking. Uh, but as far as this goes for our 25th anniversary, I mean, it's, it's everything you could want. It's Power Rangers. It's fun. It's you get all your favorite characters in there. Uh, you get some really good stories, some fantastic artwork across the board by everybody. As long as they're, f as long as they're five original stories, I mean, you can't really complain. Yeah, they're five the original part, stories. The anniversary is just to just repackage yeah. old that stories and put them out as a new book. No, these are all five original stories. So, uh, yeah, really, really good. Uh, I highly recommend it for as far as an anniversary special. Kudos. Really good. righty -o. All right, what you got from Boom? Uh, once again, I read Big Trouble in Little China, Old Man Jack, number 10. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. David Lopan now has the power of, uh, see if I can open, I can't remember, never remember what the power that he gets. He gets the power of like a, a Chinese God. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so he's killed everyone that Jack Burton loves. And it's this big, uh, debacle with, uh, like heaven and Lopan's going to attack heaven. And so Jack Burton has to get, uh, uh, one of the storms, thunder, the one of the storms from the movie, right? Uh, thunder comes and he makes a deal with them that if he leads, uh, if he leads this uh, hell army against Lopan, he'll let him kill him because mm -hmm. he's he's repeatedly tried to kill Jack Burton throughout the comic series and he's failed and failed, and uh, so he makes a deal that if he uh, he does him a favor and leads this army against Lopan, he'll let him he'll let him be the man that killed Jack Burton. So he lets him, and he just snaps his neck, <laughs> and he instantly goes to heaven, and they weigh his sins, and all of his sins are exactly uh, equal with all of his good work. So they, they don't know what to do with him. <laughs> and so he's, a, I'm assuming St. Peter here is telling him, uh, uh, he says, but you, you absolutely, you do the right things for the wrong reasons and the wrong things for the right reasons. <laughs> And half the stuff you do isn't even intentional. Hmm. So he's like, he, he makes no sense to heaven. So they don't know what to do with him. And it actually makes the uh, the uh, gatekeeper's head explode. 
So he just steals the keys and goes into heaven anyway and gets chased by a giant blowfish. <laughs> it, it just gets really wacky. It, it, it's really crazy. I, the artwork is really cool. And, and uh, let's see, I think, is it, yeah, John, I think John Carpenter actually writes this book. Let's see. Yeah, uh, written by John Carpenter and Anthony Birch, illustrated by Jorge Corona, colored by Gabriel Casada, lettered by Ed Dukeshire. Uh, man, I I like the the way it's not. Uh, it almost, in a way, reminds me the way it's drawn of like the way Mad Magazine used to do like movie parodies, right? The way the art would look, where it looked a lot like the actual actor, right? Like the the way they draw this, it looks an awful lot like an old Kurt Russell. Cool. And, and so, uh, like the characters and everything, I, like the stylistic way they draw it too is great. It's it's really cartoony, but it's it's still really like clean and, and cool looking. Mm-hmm. And uh, but and the story, the writing is really good. It's, well, it's John Carpenter writing this, right? So I mean, the writing is really funny and good, and it's right in the in the vein with with the movie. I mean, the, the it's uh, and like all the characters that from the movie are in this, all right? So it's, it's it's actually really funny, and uh, really all the all of the big trouble in little China stuff from Boom has been good. I yeah. think. Anything else from Boom or? Um, yeah, let me. I got one more. Okay. Let me get out of this one. Go back to the main page. Was that Armory Wars? Uh, yeah, that's that's the one. It's written by the guy from Coheed and Cambria, the band. Claudio Sanchez. And, and it's this uh, uh, huge epic story of a lot of different volumes of this thing, this huge fantasy sci-fi epic that has to do with uh, it has to do with religion, I guess, and like f- the magic and fairy tales and like it's like I'm coming into it. This this one is uh, like I said, like like we've said last since we started doing these, that a lot of these books we're trying to review are, you know, this one's 11 issues in Lumberjanes is 51 issues in. Right. So it's like, we're trying to play catch up with a lot of these, but I'm, I'm, I'm just reading random ones sometimes just to get a feel for what they are. And, and uh, this one, like the artwork and everything's really cool and it it looks good. It's just, it it was hard for me to get it because there's so much that's this, like I said, this is the, the Emery Wars, good Apollo. I'm burning star. Four number eleven. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm looking at the. I mean, the artwork is amazing. It's really good artwork. But yeah, I can see. You know, coming into it like cold, we would need to come into this fresh. Yeah, it's got to do with this, like with God. Uh, like, there's this line of planets in space, and all these different people live on these planets, and there's a God, and the, these people with powers have decided that God's kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and they're the and it's it's just really weird they're like there's like a rebellion going on and uh it, there, there's a lot i'm guessing because this this thing ties into i was reading a little bit about it trying just to figure out you know what is this because it's it seems like it's really good like it's really well done but it just seems like just grabbing one random issue out of this you're you're not going to get it you know what i mean right uh, but anyways, like I said, this is a, this is a story you have to have really been into because like this ties into Coheed and Cambria albums too. Like this is all part of a huge story narrative that this dude is writing. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I don't know. I got I know a lot of people that really dig their music. I don't know any of their music. I'm sure they're good. I've heard a lot of people say that they're awesome. But uh, like this uh, is a, a small piece of a huge fantasy narrative that this guy not only uh writes and has this visual side of it with these comics he has the whole musical side of this narrative too so it'd be, it's impossible for me to say this issue sucks <laughs> impossible for me to, to say it's you know great or it's terrible uh it seems really cool to me like i would this is something i'd want to go back and find out the rest of Mm-hmm. And, and find out what it actually is about, okay. but like it's it's way above me just reading the one issue out of all of it. because I mean there's been a ton of stuff with this series before this one, <laughs> right? So this is just a small part of something huge. Uh, if you're a Coheed and Cambria nutball, like I know they've got a they've got like a a crazy fan base. Like they're like if people are into Coheed and Cambria, they're like real into them. 
Right. And and so like this is probably something that something like that just is is slathering for. But uh, like yeah, like I said, I'll I'll have to go back and check out more of it and and read it like and get the full picture before I could say uh, really story wise like like you know if I like it or not. But uh, it seems cool and the artwork is cool. So I mean, definitely for for uh, if you're really into like the kind of deep deep uh, metaphorical fantasy sci-fi kind of stuff, mm-hmm. you'll probably dig this. If you're into Coheed and Cambria, you're definitely gonna dig it for sure. Uh, it's probably right up your alley because you probably know everything about this. <laughs> but I'd say pretty. I mean, pretty good from from what I could tell. It's well written. Uh, the artwork is good. Uh, beyond that, there's not much I can say uh, without knowing the what basically what the whole deal is about. All right, but I liked it. All right, all right, cool. All right, let's move on to DC because I know you read like all the books in the box from DC. Uh, I, I try to. I didn't get to as many this week. I just got to a few, but uh, I got to the good. I think I got to the cream of the crop. All right, go ahead. We're gonna we'll save the one that we both read for last. Go ahead with the other ones that you have read. All right, Man of Steel. Um, this is continuing, uh, continuing the, um, Rogozar, uh, Rogol, yep. uh, Rogolzar, I think is his name. Yep. Uh, his, uh, fight with Superman, uh, it's continuing up into space. Superman takes him to the moon. There's a fight. Rogozar beats him and, uh, the Justice League comes to Metropolis. They're, they all come in and, uh, Supergirl realizes that, that, where where he is and actually flies up there she, because they're discussing where's you know where's Clark where's Rogos are where they go mm-hmm. and so she kind of realizes he would take him away from Earth and so he's she's like if you can follow me follow me and she just f- splits and goes to the moon and uh, she finds Superman all trashed and beat up so uh, they they come back let me open that one up again. Because after that point, I know there's a point where we we find out more about what where uh, Lois and Jonathan Kent are, mm-hmm. and uh, we find out we found out last issue I think it was that uh, it was actually Jor El showed up in the in the ship, and whether it was to actually take Jonathan Kent on a tour of the galaxy and teach him about Krypton, or if it was to get him like he knew Rogozar was coming, and uh, and get him out of there. But I'm assuming that Lois goes with him too, hmm. because Jonathan Ken agrees to go with with Jor-El and learn about uh, Krypton and learn about the, the galaxy and how better to use his powers and stuff. But yeah, it's it's it starts out with that where Jor-El this it starts out with the fight with uh, on the moon, and then it goes to Jor-El coming to to uh, Superman and his family, and uh, Jonathan Kent says he's going. So I'm assuming that that uh, Lois is going to go with him too, just to keep an eye on things or whatever. Okay. And it, it kind of, since this is going on with this dude trying to destroy Superman and all of crypt, uh, everything Kryptonian, it's probably a good idea to get him out of there. Uh, the fire chief is still looking for who's setting. There's a there's an arsonist running loose in Metropolis, setting fires for some reason. We haven't figured out who that is. Uh, Supergirl. Uh, is happens to be saving uh, some kids from a fire when the Justice League show up, and that's when uh, she goes to the moon and, and gets Clark back. And uh, so the, the, he's found a symbol. It's like a weird symbol of like a circle with like a squiggly line through it, and he shows it to the Justice League, and they don't. They're trying to find out what it means, and uh, so they find out Rogozar is like on a cleansing mission, and he wants to destroy everything Kryptonian that there is. Which he, he comes to discover is everything that Krypton has touched, even in the slightest. So uh, the next place he's going, I, I may, should I go for full on spoiler? Full no. on spoiler. No, <laughs> I won't, no, I won't. I won't tell you how this ends then. All right. Cool. So that's uh, Man of Steel. It's getting better, man. I Bendis. I like I said, I was worried. I was because uh, I wasn't too fond of Bendis's last couple of years at Marvel. Right. Um, but, uh, man, Man of Steel, uh, big fan of the red trunks back, big fan of the, uh, old school Superman, uh, like the, the story. I like that he's not, uh, killed crypto so far. Okay. <laughs> uh, he did wipe out Candor though, man. And that, that was unbelievable. I thought that was a crazy, uh, 
that was a crazy loss of Superman lore. Uh, but you know, that's something that they've never done. Right. Uh, but yeah, I'm digging Bendis' Man of Steel, and the fact that it's weekly is even better that we're getting it every week. Right. It's not, it's not slow. It's coming like boom, boom. It's coming out. All right. Uh, next one I read was uh, the Flash 49 continuing Flash War. Uh, this is uh, last issue. Uh, Wally took off running, and Barry was trying to chase him. And uh, Wally wanted to. They're trying to. He wants to break the Speed Force uh, because he says if he, if he can break the like uh, Professor Zoom told him that if he breaks the Speed Force, he'll get his children back and it'll fix the timeline and everything that's been screwed up. So he believes him, and Barry Allen's trying to stop him. Well, they start running. They both start running at such tremendous speed that it's starting to affect everything it starts breaking the speed force mm-hmm. and it starts to affect things like even like with new gods and stuff and uh like it like all over the world like it flashes to a bunch of like gorilla city fortress of solitude arkham asylum uh themiscara dinosaur island and like all these places are experiencing like earthquakes and tidal upheaval and stuff because the flashes are running around the world causing chaos and uh, so Green Lantern sets up a wall, like a barrier to stop them to absorb their speed when they hit it. And Wally just plows right through it and actually hurts Hal Jordan. Almost, it actually almost breaks his Green Lantern ring. And uh, so Barry's chasing Wally and he won't stop. And they eventually, they do, they break this. There's a huge explosion from them running and they break the speed force. And uh, there's things like the sky is all gone crazy <laughs> and it's like turned red and like the, the heroes are for some reason the heroes are like all being knocked out through something hitting them it's, it's all these little sound effects that say crack 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 all like all over them so like all the other heroes are passing out from the break in the speed force and uh you find out that uh zoom was uh full of it all along and uh just manipulated basically just manipulated wally into breaking the speed force and uh so he's uh, uh, Hunter. Let's see, Hunter's all. He's he said he's become the Flash now. So it's now you've got uh, the Hunter Zolomon Flash in the red costume, and uh, so there's uh, about to be a battle. This is, I guess, this would be the Flash War. I'm, I guess <laughs> against Professor Zoom in a Flash uniform, uh, and now he's got uh, what was it? There's a power that he got. It's called, oh, he opened up, um, because they broke the speed force, he was able to open up what they call the sage force and the strength force. And so now he's got, like, like for every, like, I guess for every kinetic movement, or I guess, or whatever, there's a, a force for it. Like, there's a strength force for strength, there's a speed force for speed. You know, there's like all these forces, and, and Professor Zoom was able to unlock them. So now he's got like all these forces <laughs> mm-hmm. versus the flashes. So I'm guessing that's going to be uh, it's Flash versus Flash versus Flash versus or uh, first it's Flash versus Flash versus Flash in Flash uh, number fifty coming up. Um, I dig the Flash as always. Respect Barry Allen. Uh, get you some credit pages here and. We'll be on a roll. All right. Go back to the beginning. See, that's another thing is I got to wait for all these pages to load so there's some lag in our show. <laughs> but it's coming along. It's coming along. This is uh, Williamson, Porter, and Hi-Fi on the uh, – okay, Joshua Williamson, writer, Howard Porter, artist, uh, Hi-Fi, colorist, Steve Wands, letterer, and uh, – Porter and Hi-Fi on the cover. Uh, variant cover by Francisco Matina. So uh, Flash, always one of my favorite books. Uh, I always dig uh, Barry and Wally together. That's cool. Uh, I like that uh, Professor Zoom, like uh, a good Flash villain versus the Flashes in a Flash war. Uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, I give it a high rating this week. We don't really have a rating system <laughs> to say whether I liked it, but that was a good one. Uh, let's see. What else did I read? 
Uh, but, uh, I didn't get to read that like I wanted to. There were, like I said, this week I didn't read as many because I didn't, I didn't get to All right. uh, as many. But I did read Detective. Uh, Detective uh, teaming up with Black Lightning. Uh, he needs a uh, somebody is going around uh, taking out the Bat family because they claim that they're making they're making Batman weak. Uh, it's an old ploy the Joker's thought of a hundred times. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, Batman, well, the first they attack the signal at the beginning of it. They blow the signal up, and he gets injured. And the uh, uh, Martian Manhunter comes to talk to Bruce Wayne. Says he's he's got a uh, he wanted to talk to uh, Bruce Wayne wanted to talk to Superman, but uh, they sent Mar- Martian Manhunter instead. And Bruce Wayne's kind of annoyed by it, and sends him away. Uh, but so he's got a uh, he tries to get Black Lightning because he wants to form a team uh, to help him out, and uh, he wants Black Lightning to lead his his team. Because uh, he needs a, t- he said he needed a teacher, because he doesn't, he's got all these people with all these skills, but he doesn't have a teacher, so he wants him to be the teacher of this new team, I guess that he's building, uh, with the signal. But uh, somebody's going around, and they've got uh, Orphan uh, pinned down at the very end, and the next is just called Batman's Karma, and uh, but I have a feeling Orphan's going to kick this dude's ass because <laughs> she's no joke, but. Uh, Pretty good. I mean, this is this is one building into an arc, so it's kind of this is just setting some stuff up. It's gonna gonna be happening. Okay. Uh, but uh, Brian Hill's the writer on it. Um, Miguel Mendon- Mendonca Mendonca pencils. Uh, Diana Egia inks, and uh, Adriano Lucas on colors. Uh, Sal Cipriano on letters. Um, I, I, you know, I, I dig detective. I always have. It seems I don't know if this is the same. Um, is this the same uh, crew that worked on the last issue? I'm not exactly positive on that, but uh, it's pretty good. I think it's. Uh, there's not been a lot of Batman in Detective like, as of late. So I've been more concerned about more like the Bat family and his other team, like. Uh, like with Batwoman and and uh, like Tim Drake and and Spoiler and Orphan and Clayface and those guys. So I mean, uh, there's been a little more Batman in it as of late, and uh, it looks like we're going to get an all new team uh, instead of Batwoman. Uh, it looks like Black Lightning could be leading this new team, coming up Detective. Uh, but overall, pretty good uh, setting up a new arc for Detective. So we'll see how it goes. See if it's brilliant or gets boring all right but uh i dig that one and i think the last one is the one that we probably both read yes let's finish on a high note with the prelude to the wedding this is harley quinn and uh and joker quite honestly i enjoyed it because i like i like you know i like these uh harley quinn after the joker kind of interactions uh, and this one leads right up to the issues 48 and 49 of Batman. Yeah. Um, all, all of these preludes have been pretty important to read for yeah. the wedding issue. So leading up to it, this is Harley Quinn and Joker. Uh, it, it's kind of along the same lines as you've been seeing lately in, in DC Comics when you get a Harley Joker kind of book is Harley is Harley's trying to prove she has moved on from the Joker. Joker's trying to... Uh, use his charms against she's her. Really manipulative and yeah. really abusive, and you can tell she's still gun shy about it. Exactly. And she doesn't have the confidence she thinks she does when she has to deal with him face to face. No, um, but some really good dialogue. I mean, this Joker that we've had in these books and through the Batman books has been such a weird Joker. I mean, him, the way he talks and the way he kind of monologues and things like that. Really, a different Joker yeah. than what we've seen. Well, he's like really he's really screwed up over Batman getting married. He feels Batman is cheating on him. This is the, he feels Batman is committing the ultimate betrayal to him yeah. because he feels that they are truly soulmates. And like we said in the last issue of Batman, he has that heart to heart with Catwoman about how he can't allow her to take the bat away from him because he th- won't really know what to do with himself. If he doesn't have, he said he, he can kill like almost, it was almost a plea to, 
he needs the Batman to stop him because if he if Batman doesn't stop him, he'll burn the whole world down. He'll kill yeah. everybody. He's like, I can kill everybody, and without the Batman, I will, and I need him to stop me. Yeah. So it's, it's it really is another of this joke, you know, tragedy, comedy, Joker and Batman duality, yin and yang. Um, but all these preludes have been very important to the Batman, uh, the, the the wedding coming up in issue number 50. Yeah. Um, so definitely I recommend getting it because it has some really good dialogue between Harley and Joker. And it's really just a really good issue as far. I mean, I think the weakest one for me had to have been the Batgirl one. Yeah, uh, I agree. Of all of them, but this one, uh, you know what? This one I actually got to put a little bit after the. the I, I think Damien would be number one. Red Hood for me is number two. Yeah, I think this would be my number two here. This one, I well, I like the well. You know what? Yeah, this one would be two. Then Red Hood. Then Nightwing. The, then back. The one that I liked uh, even more was the one that was in DC Nation, and that was. <laughs> that one was like the one and by the way if you want to read this like these joker stories uh and and this wedding like start with the dc nation number zero mm-hmm. story with the wedding invitation stuff with the joker and then go on to the preludes yeah so that's going to do it for this week those are the comic books thank you all so much for joining us with these reviews make sure you go out to your comic book store this week and get your books and uh see what else is out there that may catch your interest yeah like uh we're getting uh some Zenoscope yeah. comics pretty soon, so we'll be reviewing those. If maybe we'll f- hit your fancy with one of those reviews in the future, and you can go get one of those. Exactly. Who knows? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. You can follow Chief of Space Seventy Five. You can follow me at NRDRG Renegades on Twitter. Follow our Twitch account. Follow our channel on Twitch. Nerd Rage Renegades on the Twitch. Give us a follow if you so in- or if you're so inclined. A lot of good stuff always going up on that. So- yep. Please check all that out, and we'll be back next week with some more comics and hopefully some Zenoscope. Yes, sir. Good night, comic book fans. Good night, everybody. Nerd Rage Relegates.